Yeah, so I now I can record. I'm recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Sean, could you put the meeting link yes. back? In for the... Yes. Yeah. Can you update the invite to the new meeting link? And I will. Yeah, I am. Um, sorry about that. No I think everybody yeah. except us. You know, because I don't think we missed anybody. Because I get notifications if somebody's waiting and I'm not there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the minutes doc. Got it. Okay. Are you in Barcelona already, Kate? No, I'm at the airport right now in Austin, about to start flying. Oh. Start the whole, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> See how excited I am, can't you? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of interesting just because it's a legal summit and I'm all baby law student and everything, but that's that's far. That's that's far away. <laughs> well, it, it's also going to have a lot of interesting politics this time around too. But I can... mm. because of the copyright directive. No, actually. Um... Remember, you're being recorded. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> we can um, we can proceed with um, what we were doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking the time to update the um, our notice for next week. So cool. This problem doesn't happen again. We're in the wrong Zoom. Okay. So our agenda is in the minutes, which I uh, posted. Uh, this is our first official meeting, and I thought uh, we kind of decided as we launched this that we'd talk about risk focus areas, uh, how the working group works, our OSS North America Summit proposal, and engaging volunteers. So focus areas, um, we have a document which I will paste, uh, copy link. Paste into the Zoom chat can be added to the minutes as well. These are the focus areas that um, we've kind of started sort of uh, shifting out. And in the course of doing that, I also started to put them into a GitHub repository for this working group. scanning windows to find again. Here it is. Here is the, here is a list link to the GitHub repo that we are using as well, which has basic information right now about engagement, it has a link to our meeting notice, a, lack, a link to our focus areas, and a link to the chaos mailing list. There, so this is, looks like it, somehow combined risk and value if you look right under read our launch plan oh probably because it hasn't been updated or it was probably some cut and pasting hmm there was cut and pasting i thought i went through that and i thought i actually removed read our launch plan yeah it looks like most of it actually is still the economic value oh where did i say hmm I think uh, I know what I did. No, that wasn't the fork. All right. I thought I edited this somewhere, but I don't know where. Okay. So that's uh, something to fix. <laughs> I, I swear I, I edited this. But I am. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
don't know, something, something is goofy, but I will fix that later. Um, moving right along to our focus areas. Um, we have security, code quality, licensing, transparency, and what we're calling activity, which mirrors to some extent what's growth, maturity, and decline, or the, I think what's likely to be changed to evolutionary on Wednesday, or the, is it evolution or evolutionary or? Evolution. Evolution. So we may want to adopt similar nameage or not. Or we have been talking about maybe calling it business risk or something instead. Mm -hmm. We do know um, business risk is one of the core dimensions we care about. Yeah. I don't know if we want to differentiate it like that because I know we had talked with Kate too about um, whether or not we wanted to have metrics that stand both groups but were approached from slightly different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, which I think we had said like we can at least try it for now and then if it if we need to re rethink it we can do that later but um, I just know for like the folks that I'm going to be dealing with on a regular basis. I think um, if I if I say activity, they're going to need additional explanation. If I say business risk, it might be a little bit of a more immediate light bulb. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know, just something to consider. I, I'm, I would say, I don't know, motion that we just call it business risk because that's what's going to resonate with this group. Yep. <laughs> Fine with me. <laughs> yeah, we're all good. <laughs> Keep there, it's changed in the minutes, so. And I actually updated the focus areas as well. Okay. If there's too much background noise, just let me know and I'll go back on mute. I don't okay. hear any background noise at all. Oh, Bye. Last, yeah. Well, last call, basically, they were hearing the person next to me more than me. So uh, <laughs> they must have moved on to a flight or something. They did. Yeah. But. Um, Okay, so that, that seems to be a good coverage of an updating of our focus areas that we can reflect inside the uh, GitHub repo, which I will update again or figure out what happened. Maybe I just didn't push updates I made locally. I can... Is the idea to take this document, the proposed high-level risk focus areas, and get them into the GitHub repository? I think keeping the document where it is is okay. Mm -hmm. I think having the focus areas specified as directories in the risk working group in the same way that focus areas are specified in other working groups is a next step. Okay. And then we, we, I'd suggest we just build out, you know, the detail in there. Okay. I'll just add that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for how the working group works, I didn't create that agenda item, so I will defer to whomever what might have had something in mind. I think we just intended the calls and whatnot, but I'm not positive. Was that the discussion that you guys were having you shot being Sean and Matt on? Um, I honestly can't even remember exactly the what work, it was. To have a work group repository between, or not. Yeah, and like whether or not you were gonna fork or have a branch or something, I don't know. I think that's I'm, happily resolved. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna use a working group repository. Um, and then if we have metrics to add, we'll add them to the metrics repository. Yep. You know, so the only thing that I've asked the other groups to do is when you um, have metrics. So for example, in this list here, um, in the focus area list, so you obviously have potential metrics in there, say like code complexity or test coverage. As you're adding them in your repository, can you always just ping me on those pull requests or those commits so that I have some sort of marker to keep it up to date with the metrics repository? Does that make sense? So obviously in the risk work group, you're gonna be adding things. You're gonna have the focus areas with the particular metrics inside of each one of them. And the idea is to make sure that the metrics page is capturing the work that's being done in the working groups. I, I can do it manually. It's just a little bit easier workflow wise if you just ping me. I'm also going to go and delete the risk metrics um, meeting invite and if someone else could reissue it with the Omaha 
ID. Oh. Because I, I think I'm the owner on it. Oh. Oh, okay. that's what that stands for. University of Omaha. I thought it was just some weird, like, tech naming convention. Or actually, it's so much I clearer. Could... It's Omaha 5000 down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Well, I'll go it, with it. You've been stalled Omaha, haven't you? Because nothing's going to work without Omaha. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll add that to the notes, Kate. Uh, so my editing of it may not have, I don't know what that did. No, I don't think the editing made any difference. That's why I figured I'd just say, okay, let's just delete this, delete, the, delete it going forward and let you guys own it completely. And then I'm, out of, then I'm not going to be a part of the problem. Okay, I edited it in mine. Now it's, I guess you didn't get an invite because I didn't own it. Yep, that's right. Oh. <laughs> there, it's it. not for this week, but from the L on, it's gone. Wouldn't be the yeah. first time. I assume power I didn't have. <laughs> Okay, so our our North America proposal went in uh, with uh, Jessica, Matt, Jessica and I on it, but I think we'll join Matt to it as well. And um, I think I socialized that with the whole launch group here. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I can inject it into the minutes though. If I can. It's a good thing. Find it. Yeah. Hang on. Bring it up. That's just the one, and I think I confirmed it. My um, fall semester is going to have started by then, so it's unlikely. Uh, I will be there in spirit. I will unlikely be there in person. Okay. That's all right. It just gives us a reason to create the Jessica Wilkerson risk sticker. <laughs> make, make some caricature of your face part of the whole thing. So, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I put that link in the, in the Zoom chat, and that can be shared in the minutes now. So we'll find out if that's accepted sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. And our final let's see, agenda item was encouraging volunteers. Uh, I, did I did send an invite to the individuals who expressed interest at our last, at the Open Source Summit North America Leadership, Open Source Leadership Summit. And I will send individual messages to those people again because everybody likes to be invited twice if their inbox is like mine. <laughs> Not three or four times, but yeah. Uh, you yeah. might so, and then just ask them when you're invited, ask them if they want to be added to the invite directly, mm -hmm. as opposed to yeah. just following it from the web page. Oh, that's a good idea. And then since you'll own it, then that way it'll, yeah, they'll so. find, they'll know what's actually happening. <laughs> that yeah. makes show up. Can I, um, this is just general clarification on, understanding, I guess, how chaos almost as a whole works. But when you say volunteers, what exactly, I mean, because I have people who could probably want to come in and be like, I want X metric and Y metric and Z metric. But when you say volunteers, like, what are you actually looking for them that's to do? Saying what they want is volunteering. I think that's useful yeah. information. Okay. Yeah, volunteering their time to join these calls. And, and if they join the, like, if they want something and they join the call, then they can be more certain we understand together what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, and they may learn some things about uh, other things they want or how to maybe refine what they're asking for. So I think it, even it, their participation will advance whatever their other interests are, I think, in this area. Yeah, I just didn't know if you, if you guys were trying to avoid like a, I guess almost a free rider problem of a bunch of people coming in and being like, I want all of these features and then refusing to do any of the actual no, work. We're not, we're not, we, that's not a problem. That is, okay. <laughs> that's just, uh, that's helpful. But Sharing I, what you want. Open helpful. source. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> I, I will say this too, uh, Jessica, I think the way that the project, the chaos project in general is structured now, we can capture that pretty easily. Okay. The many voices. I think for a while it would have been problematic early on. Mm-hmm. But I think at this point we're good, good to go there. Okay. So then, who? And the, again, this is just so I understand the process. Who actually is developing the metrics themselves? I guess I'm I'm thinking of them almost like equations. Are, is that you and are you and Sean so doing that? Or? We will be. This group will be actually working on developing definitions of the metrics. And when, okay. it, when it comes to equations, where where that applies, that might be implemented in software. And this this working group can decide how they might want to see work examples. So if you want, if we decide that we want to see them in Jupyter Notebooks, 
because that's low hanging fruit. We could decide to do that. If, if we decide that we prefer to see them in an auger prototype, we can, we can choose to do that. Um, we can use pseudocode to say, you know, conceptually, here's the logic that we want to be followed in implementation. Um, some of this oh, is almost like a specification. Almost. Yeah. I mean, Matt, okay. what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was going to say Sean, Sean kind of wears two hats on this call. Yeah. But one is to develop the, uh, as he was saying, kind of that goal question metric approach, right? Which I think you're familiar with now. And then actually deploying them. Sean also wears the auger hat. And there's a, a team of developers behind that, which is Sean and then many other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when there's questions about, and, and same with the, the folks at Baturgia too, right? So there's the Grimoire Lab. There's, there's two tools in Chaos. One is, there's three. There's, but the two tools that would be relevant here would be um, Augur, which is kind of Sean and, and the team that he has. And then there's the Grimoire Lab deployment from an organization called Baturgia, which is Jesus and, and Daniel and Manrique, kind of a, a, a group of guys in, in group of people in Spain um, who may be interested in helping with deployments as well around these areas. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So the reason that I ask again is um, I think Matt, you and I had a conversation about this when I first started joining the calls about just me getting up to speed um, about like some of these could theoretically speaking be done without software, like provided that you could get the, the raw data, for example, of like average issue resolution time. So uh, assuming that you could figure out some way to even manually be able to locate all of the issues and then be able to manually calculate the um, the resolution time and then take the average. That doesn't necessarily need software yet. Um, that obviously be way more convenient in an automated fashion. But um, trying to figure out, you know, when can people start using these? I guess is the question. So is it because I could almost see this as a staged process where we've defined what the metrics would be there's a little bit of work done to say like, how would you do this manually? And then the software automation part of it is um, sort of the last stage. And I don't know if that's how you guys are thinking about it or not. So Sean, do you want to chime in? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it um, a happening kind of iteratively where we define conceptually five metrics, let's just say, and then we go through the process of implementing and prototyping them for a project, actually showing people who are interested how those metrics are represented in their repositories. And we're finding the both, I think, the implementation and the, the definition through what we learn by actually taking a look at it. And, and while that implementation work happens, I think we can, you know, go forward and define, let's say, five, five additional metrics and, and go through the same cycle. So where it's possible to build something to see what, if what we have asked for is what we want, we should do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what you think of that. What I think of that? Yeah. Or what Matt thinks of that? You, I think you, I'm more, you know, I know. Um, no. John says that stuff all the time. I'm just <laughs> No, that sounds good. I think it's just um, some of the promise of this for some of the folks that I'm talking to right now is this idea of, of frankly being able to do it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, especially for those who are in like contract negotiations or in the middle of development cycles where they're trying to pick what open source package to use. And if they had um, a little bit quicker access to say like, okay, I can conceptually, I can understand, I need to go figure out mm -hmm. what the resolution times for all of these things are. But if there was a little bit more of like a guide of how that happened, mm -hmm. um, that they could then be provided that isn't necessarily software, um, software based, it, you know, it, it it's just, it's, it, it would be an interesting intermediate step, but I also don't know if it's worth the amount of work that might be involved to do that when um, just jumping straight to the software implementation or what have you is you, faster and ultimately gives more value. Are the, are the repository, so are the repositories they want scanned publicly available or are they behind a proprietary wall? And the reason I ask is because if, if they have repositories that are public that they're interested in specific information about, I could go get those and use what we have to see if the information we're able to provide is useful. 
GitHub. When you say GitHub repositories, I, are you talking like GitHub? The source, yeah, the source code. Um, I don't know. I would assume for the open source context, most of it would, but frankly, you guys actually develop software, whereas I don't, so you might know that better than I do. If it's, if it's open source, then yeah, it's yeah. available, and we might be able to help them. I mean, on occasion, what we've done is just talk off line or sort of on the side with particular stakeholders while they explain their interests or needs and mm -hmm. and try to and we provided little examples of well, what about this what about that and that helps us refine both the metrics definitions and the the software mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 the, and the software that we use to analyze things so and, and I'm comfortable like sometimes companies don't want those those experiments happening in a public forum like this so Right. Facilitate that off to the side, and that advances our knowledge as well as theirs. Um, mm -hmm. And it just comes back here as a report or a metric definition um, that's obscured. It takes their identifying. Yeah, I'm going to put the Sean. I'm going to put one of your Augur Lab things in here. Okay. So if you click that, Jessica. Yes. You totally pick something completely random. And this will be more useful to Kate when you can click on the visualization and do drill down. This I know. And so we're working on that. It says what it says web page block to me actually. Really? Yeah. I got to it. Did you all get to it? I got to it. I got it. Well, okay. Let me try again. Maybe it's just special. Maybe maybe <laughs> that maybe that lounge Wi Fi is not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that at all. <laughs> So, yeah, no. I'm definitely getting web page block, I'm afraid. That's weird. That is really weird. Yeah, you want me to screen share and show you? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious what the, I mean, there's no HTTPS on it, so. I don't know. Um, so, that's what I see. Well, you're logging as a courtesy to guests and customers. You're getting, so, okay. So oh, hold it. Yeah. Wi-Fi is blocking you. Yeah, there. which it's is what they what they've got here at the off at the um, airport probably. Wow. It's, yeah, it's um. Well, it's thank you for that courtesy, AT and T. <laughs> we cannot tell you how helpful that is. Uh, well, I can, I can welcome to the end of net neutrality. <laughs> let me let me share my screen just for Kate. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully the hotels from Europe will let me just look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just I just pulled something off of um, the work that Sean is doing mm -hmm. with Augur. And so Jessica, you can see across the top where it says risk. Yeah. And so this is, as you can see, risk, value, DNI, growth, maturity, and decline. So I mean, really, just that risk tab would potentially be a home for the different focus areas and the subsequent metrics. Mm -hmm. And so then it's fairly straightforward for Sean to just point Augur this tool at the repository of interest to build out those metrics. Right, assuming that the the backend code has been defined and written to actually like go out and grab mm -hmm. the appropriate information. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, Okay, that makes sense. I, I'm just, I guess I'm trying to figure out, and I know I'm, I'm not explaining this particularly well, so I apologize, but um, I'm, the, the first question that anyone who's interested in this is gonna ask me is like, what do you want me to do next? Um, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what I tell them. Like, do I tell them, I need you to get me, like what if you're considering, um, this is a terrible example, but that's the only thing I can think of at the moment, if you're considering what, uh, SSL package to use, like if you're going to use open SSL or boring SSL or whatever some of the other mm -hmm. versions are. Um, and they wanted to say like apply some of the, the current risk metrics that we have defined to the, the universe of SSL packages. Um, what precisely would, would, would you guys need them to do in order for them to, to use that as a use case or something, for example? So to me, I think it would be helpful if they would join the call so they could define the metrics that they want to see. Mm -hmm. Just number one. So if they want to compare SSL packages in your example, what would they want to compare? Like okay. what, what, I, what are the things that they would like to compare to each other? 
so maybe assuming just for the sake of argument for this call and also because I think that they might actually do this. Um, if I give them, let's say the risk, the proposed risk focus areas document and they read it over and they're like, yeah, this is great. Like I want these things. Great. Then what? Yeah. Give us the repos. Okay. So actually say like we need, so what packages do you want us to do this on? Yeah. yeah. Sean, tell okay. me if I'm wrong, but that's. Yeah. Yeah. If they say, yeah, exactly. That we could, that would be great. Okay. So yeah, if they agree to all the metrics, cool. <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> and then just yeah. tell us where you want to point them. And now every metric, to Sean's point though, too, every metric may not be attainable from mm. from the repository. So some of some of the metrics, this is kind of the earlier conversation, some of the metrics might require a different style of data that isn't available from the trace data in the repository. Mm -hmm. Diversity and inclusion runs into this all the time, right? So the questions that they ask aren't necessarily from, you can't get it from GitHub trace data. Right. So, so if there's 20 metrics that are proposed to these organizations, it might only be that 10 are possible to be seen right now or Sean has developed or whatever. Or, you know, right, so, so, okay, so that's helpful, yeah. And like, you know, to what extent are some of them already in CII or not? Mm -hmm. Is the other thing right here for this one. In the badge, yeah. like through the badge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, what portion of coverage of, C of the CI badge criteria is there? And we can report, that mind. on that risk tab, we can report the CII information as well, just because there's a nice API. I think, yeah, I think that would be good if we could do that, because I know I'm put in, at the same time that I'm pushing, I'm almost pushing the chaos metrics and the CII badge <laughs> in parallel. Um, and so I think in the same way that it, it, it would be very helpful to have that visualization, especially because everyone loves pictures. Okay. Yeah. And if they could all be in one location. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, okay. Well, in that case, like I know I've got at least three people, two of them are product officers at medical device companies. And one of them's with um, sort of like a best practices organization for healthcare who I'd like to frankly just hand them the proposed risk level document and be like, these are the, these are the metrics that we're currently looking at for risk. What do you think? And then if they pretty much come back, which I'm expecting them to come back and say like, these all sound good. Maybe they'll add some, maybe they'll say, I don't need these mm -hmm. three, but I'm relatively certain they're going to come back and be like, okay, yeah, like now what? And then I just, so you're telling me that what I need to get from them is that the packages that they would like to apply this to, and then we can yeah, move the forward. Actual, the actual yeah. repository where that, where mm -hmm. that, where that package okay. is. And then see, what, if, see if it shows what you're hoping to see. <sighs> yeah. yeah, and I, and I figured, and I think Sean, this is what you were saying earlier, is like once we start that process, it's gonna show where we can get metrics currently where, and where we would need to build out or find other sources of data or whatever the case right. may be. Okay, all right, <laughs> I'm up to speed. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. I think that concludes the formal agenda item. <laughs> uh, anything else? No, this is great. Um, just, um, just so you all know, too, the web pages are being updated. Sorry, Jessica. The web pages are being updated to include the now that risk is occurring regularly to just kind of have a nice central place where this is this information is provided. So. Is uh, one thing I'm curious about is um, where are we with actually just a summary of the licensing stuff right now? In the sense that there's some of the Dusox stuff that's being resurrected and that was potentially getting or or organized into a, a prototype type of thing. It was one of these set dimensions here. Is that anything there visible yet or not? Uh, Sean, I think it's a little behind the scenes still. It's not visible on this public UI that you can't get to right now. But yes, we have resurrected do socks. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It is alive. <laughs> it's alive. Okay. Um, and it's been updated to the latest version of Python too. So mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, it seems that it's living. I, I think there are, Matt, you and I have discussed possibly using some other license scanner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so scan code is the other one that's pretty slick. Just in terms of getting off the ground pretty quickly. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Kate. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about is uh, make sure that we use the SPDX options yep. for generating out SPDX out of it as opposed mm -hmm. to, because that way to make sure we get the, the actual license expressions mm -hmm. as well as things that we can take, wrap and do things from later. Mm -hmm. we, we, I think we always have kind of have SPDX on the mind. When yeah. We're doing stuff. yeah, I know. It's just, it, it, 
its default isn't SPDX, and that's why I'm sort of saying if you're going to oh, use the scan code, okay, put, put, put the option on to make it as gen the SPDX set. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, let me follow up with uh, Matt Snell. There's a different Matt here. Mm -hmm. uh, about. The other thing, uh, and I, it may already be in here, but the whole notion of quality and bugs and bug rates, where is that being tracked right now? Is that under common or is that going to be here under quality? I don't think, I don't think common has mentioned it. I don't recall that coming up yet. Yeah. Code quality? Yeah, yeah code quality. We have code quality as one of the- Is that areas. something we want to start flushing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can yeah. start flushing out code quality. Because I think that's that going to be something item. that people care about. Oh, it's in there, Kate. It's one of the whole focus areas. Okay, okay then I'm behind, sorry. It's got right now- This, the, is, our, this is our recursive definition that we couldn't figure out a better way to run. <laughs> Right now, the, okay. the several things in there are code complexity, test coverage, beams, Kokomo mm -hmm. model, assessment of the- Okay, I'm seeing it now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also just think we're missing the straight old bugs. What's the total number of bugs and how, how many of them are installed and how many are open? Uh, and um, we have are we some of that in the business risk, but we can bump some of those up, maybe. Do we have books? Then do we need to do things to distinguish bug tags from feature request tags on issue trackers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's certainly distinct from the discussion so far. Yeah, I think the growth maturity in the client group has principally been concerned with issues as a measure of engagement and i think here when we specify mm -hmm. the bug type we're saying that we want to scan for defect rates yeah that's that's a good way of phrasing it i'm sorry i was typing i missed that what was that so uh, growth maturity in the clients yeah. are, sorry you say it kate we want to look at what um what's the open number of Open bugs that are defects as opposed to feature requests. Okay. I think is what the, the yes. what uh, Sean was saying. And that, that was my attempt to summarize. Okay. Good summary. It's much more straightforward than what I said. Not really. That's okay. Thanks, Sean. It was, it was fewer words. I, to me, fewer words is always more straightforward. All good. Um, yeah. And um, I'm wondering if there's almost some aspect of, and this is getting into a next level of detail here, but the technical debt aspect and backport aspect. And I'm not quite sure how to capture that. Uh, it's a more, slightly more sophisticated concept. Uh, it's what happens for an LTS. Like technical so, debt on the main line or technical debt incurred within the project itself? It's sort of away from the main, like, like I could say if you cut an LTS, okay, thinking Linux, Zephyr, those ones. And there are security fixes that are fixed upstream we want them backported into certain releases. Yep. And so uh, I'm not quite sure, like how current is a version of a code with the known security state is an element of risk in my mind. Um, and I'm not quite sure how other to express that. I get what you're saying. Though. But would that be under business risk? We could try it there. Um, goal. Determine. Um, well, we could just say it like this: technical debt of project in relation. Or security debt. 
maybe security and licensing, not security debt. So I'm sort of thinking it's not really a technical debt. It's more like how up to date is it? Like that? Yeah. At least that's the goal. How often do you use what, Kate? You like cut out right when? Yeah, I know my my connection is pretty unstable. I'm sorry. It's, it's more like the security debt rather than technical debt. In my mind. I got it. Mm -hmm. You know how much? How many bugs do we have? Like how many known security bugs do we know that are out there that could apply to this code base that haven't been applied to the code base? That could be applied to the code base. Yeah. Backporting into LTSs. So all the stuff that Greg puts up in mainline and then he backports them, you know, things go into the mainline and then he backports them into the supported releases. Yeah. And it releases at some point in time too. And so there may be people using them and there may be no bugs, but no one's really tracking that. So there's a lot of dimensions here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just trying to think. So it's like, you know, how up to date is it? And, you know, is the you're looking at pulling from, or are you pulling from something that was off of someone else's fork that refers to a version? Okay, so like pulling, I, again, this is what I get for not writing software on a regular basis, um, but like if you're pulling in a dependency that's maybe not the most up to date or the most fixed or something, pulling in a, a fork or Version yeah. Of the code. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's sort of a question like, okay, there's a security fix that's up there in mainline. It's fixed in mainline. Okay, it gets ported it back into the back, back ported into the LTS. Okay. Now your version of Android is using a certain version of the LTS kernel. Um, how far out of date is it from that upstream and the security fixes that are known upstream in the version that Google has got on your phone today? Okay. You know, yeah, I think so that's there's a that sort of, uh, there's, that yeah, there's, a lot there's a sort of a delay window time frame um, of number. I'm trying to capture it at the very end of that document. I don't know if you see it down there. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing, I'm sort of seeing it. Uh, if I, my connection gets even choppier when I switch out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, um. Yeah, that, I mean, I know that that's a huge problem for, um, like, I think durable medical equipment is the official term where they, um, they know that there's several versions behind in their embedded XP version, for, for example. So, um, that makes sense to me. Like, that was a, that's still an issue with um, the WannaCry bug. Mm hmm Yep, that's why I'm uh, downstream. I think it's more downstreams rather than forks, Matt. That's I'm fine. I'm trying to figure out how to wordsmith it a little on. Yeah. <laughs> downstream is <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Downstreams, yeah. Maybe, maybe known. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe known bugs fixed in upstream, but not in downstream. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Got it. Okay. That's, I'm happier. <laughs> Thank you. That was one that had occurred to me since we chatted last. Okay. Cool. So, okay. Uh, so, I'm um, just for me, so and at this point, I'll probably hang up and do. See you, Kate. Uh, <laughs> Bye. Bye, Kate. Travels. See you later. Yeah. Um, Matt and Sean, just for your own awareness, I think now that I sort of understand better precisely what um, you need from me or like you need from the people who I'm going to try and pull in, I am going to have some conversations with some folks this week. Okay. On, um, sure. And I'll provide them the risk, the high level risk focus areas document. And then if they come back and say, yeah, these look good. Um, like let's see it let's see an example or whatever or let's see a proof of concept i will try and get from them uh the repos that they would want to see uh, and good. then provide them yes all right
Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Perfect. I will capture that. Um, uh, provide. Interested parties, stakeholders? Folks. <laughs> there you go. That's all I needed. Okay, cool. Sean, anything else for us? I have nothing else. I think um, we're good to go. All right. Till next, next week. week. Perfect. Um, I haven't seen the invite yet, so Sean, I assume or somebody's going to be sending out the, the new. I can send out a new one. Yeah, I'll send out the new one to everybody. I'll do that right now. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.